about, are you ready for God's word? Amen. A little bit of enthusiasm makes me feel better. <laughs> All right, let me share with you quickly. I want to talk to you quickly this morning about faith versus feelings. You may not be aware of this, but one of these two will guide your life, will dictate your life, either faith or feelings. All right? And we all have feelings and emotions, nothing wrong with that. The longer your hair, the more emotions you'll typically have, all right? Don't, don't know why those go together, but they do, all right? And so we all have feelings and emotions, all right, men and women. But if we make the mistake of following our feelings, we're going to live a very up and down life. And you know people like that. Where, you know, today they're up, tomorrow they're down, the next day they don't even know whether they are up or down. But, you know, they live these up and down, these roller coaster lives. And God never intended for you and me to live like that. Bible says in Romans 1 verse 17, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? You and me. Those who've been justified just as if I never committed sin. That's what Jesus does. He wipes that out just as if I've never committed anything. And he makes us just, righteous. And so the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. Not by feelings. You know, if you wake up and you feel miserable, then just go through the day miserable. You know, if you feel a bit of fear, well, then just go through the day and feel anxious and feel uptight. No, 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 that's not what it says. It says the just shall live by faith. When you and I live by feelings, this is what it looks like. Oh, I don't feel so good. You know, I've got so many problems and challenges, and I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And so guess what? We go down that road. And who knows how we're going to feel by the end of the day, tomorrow, because we are following our feelings. When we follow faith, this is what it looks like. Oh man, I'm not feeling too good because I've got some problems and challenges. And I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But God has been faithful in my past and he'll be faithful in my future. Amen. You see the difference? We still have the same feelings. We still have the same concerns. But the way we respond to it is different. On the one hand, we follow those feelings. On the other hand, we switch. We say, no, I'm not going to go down that road and just follow that. I'm going to come this way and I'm going to follow faith. And here's what I want you to see. When you and I follow faith, it has a very stabilizing effect upon our lives. It's great to be married to somebody who's following faith, whose, whose trust is in God, whose confidence is in the Word because they're not up and down. It's great to have a leader or a boss who's following faith because everybody, everything out there, is up and down and uncertain, but they're stable. They're consistent because they trust in God. And so here's what I want you to, to do. Here's the application. Here's the thing that my friend was saying. I don't know what to do. <laughs> here's the application, and I'm going to give it to you up front. I want you to make a decision. Am I going to allow my feelings to dictate my life, or am I going to look beyond my feelings? And live by faith. Simple as that. That's, that's what I'm going to leave in your lap today. So in other words, let me really simplify it. Are you going to follow your feelings? Or are you going to follow faith? That's what we've got to decide at the end of the day. Have you ever gotten up in the morning and you just didn't feel great? <laughs> I think most of us feel like that. Dierwald in front here, he feels like that every morning. Because I, I'll let you in on a bit of a secret here. You see, he wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning to join his, his senior pastor to cycle at 4.30. And he doesn't feel great. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but, but I suspect 
he looks at that and he, and he says, you know, this boss of mine is crazy. Because when I ride next to him in the mornings, for the first 10 Ks, you can't speak to him. You know, there's no response, you know. <laughs> the lights aren't even on yet, you know. He, he's just pedaling. And I know when we go through that neighborhood over there, 10 Ks down the line, I can come next to him. Hey, Devil, how are you doing? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. All right. But I think we've all, we've all had that. We, we wake up in the morning and you just, you just don't feel great. And what happens if you follow those feelings? You go through the day miserable, moody, maybe even, even irritable. All right? And so that's what happens when you and I, when you and I follow those, those feelings. You know, you, you just walk around miserable and moody all the time. You and I, we, we, we dare not follow our feelings. Do you know there are times where I come to the pulpit here where, where I don't feel good? So in other words, you know, I've had times where, where I prepare a message and I put in a lot of hours and a lot of preparation. And then on a Sunday morning, I'm just busy going through it. And I, I, start, I start doubting. And I'm thinking, Leonard, I don't know if this is that good. I don't know if the people really need this. <laughs> now's not the time to change it, you know? Now, you know. Now's not the time to start doubting. And I come to the pulpit, and I put my heart into it, and I give you my best. And guess what happens? While I'm busy preaching, I sense, I feel God's anointing just upon that word. And afterwards, those are the Sundays where I have many of you come and say, Leonard, that's exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. And I stand back and I'm like, wow. We dare not allow our feelings to lead us and to dictate our lives. We've got to flip it around and we've got to, we've got to follow faith. We've got to follow God's word. I prayed for a, a lady the other day who was going in for surgery. Uh, it was quite a, quite a big op, quite a, s a serious thing. And so she was just a little bit anxious. And I reminded her that God goes with you every step of the way. Uh, you know, right into theater, God will be there, right there with you. And so she said to me, how do I know that? Because, because I can't feel him. And so I just reminded her, I said, listen, God deals with faith. The enemy deals with feelings. Be careful. That's his playground is our, our mind, our emotions and feelings. That's his favorite playground. Now, now, emotions in itself is not necessarily good or bad. It can be helpful. It can be harmful, depending on how we handle it. And the enemy, Satan, knows this. So guess what he does? He'll flood you and me with negative feelings with negative emotions, hoping that you're going to follow those emotions, that your life will go down that path. And so some people don't even realize this. They don't even know it. And so when the enemy comes and floods them with, with negative stuff, man, they wake up feeling miserable. They go through the day miserable. They, they, they wake up a, a bit fearful, a little bit anxious. They go through the day. They're driving in the, in, in the traffic and they feel a bit of anger come up because somebody is doing something and they, and, and they start hurting and start waving their fist and showing the other driver they also have a middle finger. <laughs> and so what are they doing? They're just following their feelings. We dare not follow our feelings. Feelings will often contradict your faith. You see, there are times where feelings will say to you, you're not going to make it through this up. Your marriage is not going to make it. Your business is not going to make it. You're going to get retrenched down the line. And so those are the kind of things that, that, that we'll feel, that we'll sense. And if we make the mistake of following that, those, those feelings will lead us into defeat. How sad when if we just followed faith and followed God's word and, and stood on his word, man, we could have been going right into victory, right into what God has for us. But now I've been listening to all these things 
And, I, and my mind just keeps going. And I just keep following it. And, and what happens? I just end up right into defeat. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry. I wonder why he told us that, as if we ever worry. <laughs> don't worry. As a matter of fact, he, he tells us in, in that passage, he tells us a couple of times, don't worry about your life. In verse 27, he asks this question, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? It's a rhetorical question. It's like, don't even answer it. <laughs> Is there anything good that comes from worry? Is there any benefit? Is it going to help you? He says, don't even answer because you already know the answer. And then Jesus says this. He says, why do you have such little faith? Notice how he's contrasting worry and faith. He's saying, don't follow that. Don't go down that road because you have little faith. He says, you've got to build your faith. You've got to increase this. You've got to go after that. And so I want to ask you again that same question. Are you going to allow your feelings to dictate your life? Are you going to follow that, go after worry? Or are you going to live a life of faith and follow God's word? It's the decision you and I have got to make. And here's the thing. We're never going to get away from negative feelings. So, so there's nothing wrong with you when you have negative feelings. Every single one of us has those, but you've got to decide, am I, am I going to be guided by them? Am I going to allow those feelings to control me? Or am I going to control the feelings? And the good news is you don't have to follow them. You don't have to allow them to control you. So just because you wake up discouraged doesn't mean that you've got to go through the day discouraged. Just because you feel some anger in the traffic doesn't mean you've got to follow it and, and, and lie on your hoot and shake your fist and, and all that. We don't have to follow our feelings. Think about it quickly. How many of you didn't feel like, didn't feel like coming to church this morning? And please don't put up your hand because then I'll, then I'll feel discouraged. But let's be honest. There are times where we don't feel like it, but we do it. And some of you have driven far to come here today. We do it because we know it's the right thing to do. And we know it's going to be good for us. And there are times where I don't feel like getting up early in the morning to go and exercise, but I do it because I know it's, it's the right thing. And so if we live our lives based upon our feelings We'll never achieve anything of significance. We've got to move beyond that. Now, of course, we all have positive and negative feelings, positive and negative emotions. And we've got to learn to identify the negative emotions. And so what are some of the positive emotions? Let me, let me just give you a couple quickly. Positive emotions are things like gratitude and love and joy and admiration and, uh, and, and appreciation, all those things are, are positive feelings, positive emotions. What are some negative ones? I've given you some of them already. Uh, fear, anger, jealousy, uh, unforgiveness, guilt. And so when, when, whenever something wells up on the inside, there's these emotions. All you've got to do is just, just pause for a moment and just ask yourself, are these emotions helping me or hurting me? Are they making me feel better or worse? Are they lifting me up or pulling me down? And if it's in any way negative, then switch and start, start looking at God's word, start looking at promises in his word, but don't make the mistake of just following those feelings and, and just going down, down that road. I, I visited an, an elderly man some time ago, who was on his deathbed, and he just had a couple of weeks left, and so he asked to see me. I'd led him to the Lord just a month or two before that. He'd gone right through his life, not really serving God, and right at the end, God was just gracious to him. God gave him an opportunity to make right. We don't all have that opportunity, so we've got to take it while we can, when we can. And so he had that opportunity, and I prayed with him. And so now, now he knows. He's just got a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks left. 
and, and he was a little bit, a little bit anxious. He didn't have assurance of salvation that, that if, if, if he died, that he definitely go to heaven because, you know, I only gave my life to the Lord the other day. And so I asked him, I said, now listen, hang on, hang on. When you prayed that prayer with me the other day, did you mean business with God? Oh, absolutely, he said. I said, now listen, if you meant business with God, God meant business with you. Because he says in his word in Romans 10 verse 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from eternal separation from God. That's what hell is. It's eternally being separated from God. And so, so when we call upon the name of the Lord, Scripture says we'll be saved. I said, what was I saying to him? Same, exactly what I'm saying to you this morning. Hey, you got to decide. Are you going to, now, are you going to follow your feelings and lie here all anxious and uptight? Or are you going to follow faith? And that's what God's word says. And if that's what his word says, then I'm going to take him at his word. And I'm going to trust him for that. And that's exactly what he did. Now, now let's be honest. It's easier. It's always easier to follow our feelings, isn't it? When, when you feel uh, 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 angry, it's easier just to be angry and just to be upset than it is to stay calm and say, whoa, 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 whoa. It's easier to just do that. You know, it's easier to, to, to hold a grudge and to be upset with somebody than it is to forgive them. It's easier to go out and buy whatever we feel like buying, even though we can't afford it. But it's easier to do that than to say, whoa, whoa, hang on. Maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe I should just, just save and ju just be disciplined. And so if we keep following our feelings, we're never going to live a life of victory and success. But we'll actually live a life of, of defeat and disaster. And so we've got to learn to switch when it's negative feelings, when it's the wrong feelings. So then I guess the question is, so where does faith come from? Well, that's an easy answer. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so your faith and my faith is built and based upon the Word of God. Don't you love God's Word? You know, I, I, I find when I just spend some time in His Word, man, my faith is just built up. I, I, you know, I'm encouraged. And, and if I happen to read some of the promises in the Word, man, I have even more faith. I was reading just this, word, just this week in my quiet time, I think on Monday morning, I just woke up early. It must have been around 3 o'clock. And, and, and I went uh, to the front of the house and went and sat down and took my Bible. And, and I read something and it just popped out at me. And it was exactly what I needed, you know, for what I'm busy going through and some of the, the, the challenges and stuff. And, and God spoke to me right there. <laughs> and that's what happens when you and I spend time in the Word. Had I not read God's Word that day, I would have missed it. God wants to speak to us. One of the main ways that he speaks to you and me is, is through God's word. And so we've got to spend time in his word. Real faith is not based upon our feelings. <laughs> it's based upon the word. Real faith says, if God's word says it, I believe it. That settles it. And so that's faith. And that's the privilege that you and I have as believers, is just to get into God's Word and, and to take Him at His Word. Now, why is it then that some Christians, they Christians, they have Bibles, more than one, <laughs> but they still follow their feelings? Why is it? I think it's because maybe they don't know this stuff. Maybe it's because they're lazy. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, you'll find some people, they'll come in here and, and, and our other churches, and they'll come and plonk themselves down. And they'll wait, they'll wait for the pastor who's done all the work to feed them. Have you seen those little birds in the nest with the big, big mouths? Some people do that. They come sit here with big mouths. Feed me, feed me, feed me. And that's good. No, no problem with that. <laughs> all right? He has the problem, though. It's not enough. It's not enough. You've got to go and feed yourself during the week. And then you'll have some of those little birds with the big mouths. You'll, you'll have critical ones. 
and so they'll say, you know, I want, I want meat. I want steak. You need, you need to feed me steak. <laughs> Listen, the last time I looked, mature people feed themselves. Grown-up people, it's babies who are fed porridge, all right? And so when, when we mature, we don't just wait for a Sunday, but during the week we spend a little bit of time in God's Word. And what happens? It builds our faith. And so when negative things and challenges and stuff come and those negative feelings come, what happens? No problem. I rise above those things because I've got God's Word on, on the inside. We've got to spend time in God's Word. So l- let me make this practical. You may be looking at the future of your children in South Africa, and you're thinking, future, Lennon. I don't know that there's a future here for them. <laughs> Listen, let me say to you, you know what your problem is? <laughs> You're following your feelings. You're not following faith when you think like that. Those are feelings. Well, well you know, what am I supposed to do? Follow faith. Where do I get that? I've just told you, God's word. So what does God's word say about your children? At Vietney. <laughs> well, go and have a look. <laughs> let me show you what Isaiah 54 says. Psalm 112 says, all right, So uh, Isaiah 54 says, I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace, great peace. Psalm 112, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commands. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. Isn't that an awesome promise? God says your descendants If you love God and you follow God, your descendants will be, it's a promise, mighty on this earth. Let me give you, let's read it from a different translation. Another translation says, their children, these are Christians, righteous people, their children will be successful everywhere. Notice it doesn't say they will be successful in the USA, but they won't be successful in the RSA doesn't say that it says everywhere why because when God's blessing is upon you when God's favor is upon you it doesn't matter where you are you're going to rise you're going to shine you're going to excel whether in South Africa or I'm not hassled about my children because God (laughs) frankly they're your children (laughs) sometimes they're my problem you know (laughs) And, and they in my in my wallet. <laughs> but their future is in your hands. And my kids are going to be successful everywhere. Not because I'm so smart, but because he is. All right? You got to make up your mind. Do you follow feelings? Or do you follow God's word? And let me say to you, there's nothing wrong with, with feelings and emotions. God has given us feelings and emotions. Even Jesus said, he says, laugh with those that laugh and cry with those that cry. All right, but here's what I want you to see. Our feelings and emotions, they there, that's fine. But it always takes second place to God's word. Always takes second place. And so you're going to have, and there are going to be times in your life where you're going to have strong feelings. And you're going to have to decide, do I, do I follow this or do I follow God's word? Do I follow faith? All right, let me give you an example. So let's say, let's say you go through some serious illness. They're gonna, they, you will have times there where you don't feel great, where you feel anxious. What are you going to follow? You're going to follow that or follow God's word? A friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, uh, was battling with cancer some time ago, earlier this year. Went through all the different treatments and stuff, months and months of treatment. The doctors got to a place where they actually said to him, there's not much we can do for you anymore. And so they basically sent him home to die. With a bottle of pills, with morphine. They said to him, 
and the pain gets too much, take some of this. Can't do more for you. So do you think he was a bit discouraged, a bit despondent? Of course. Of course he would be. Anybody would be. Here's the thing. Did he follow those feelings? He didn't. It was amazing. Because every time I phoned him, man, this guy's on top. This guy's positive. He's doing this in the church. He's doing that in the church. And I'm thinking, he's possibly got a couple of weeks left to live, maybe a couple of months. We did a, a, a training course. You know that the progressive pastors training that we put on here at the church and pastors come from everywhere for training and so he brings some of his colleagues no they're going to come and he sits here in the class and I, I can't believe it and so one day you know he's he's excited and he's chirping and 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 you know he's like he's doing so well so I go to him afterwards I say hey how are you doing he says I feel terrible today I had to take some pills. So a couple of weeks later, he has a pastor visiting him, a visiting pastor speaking in his church. And so after the service, this pastor says to him, can I pray for you? Now we've all prayed for him. His church has been praying for him. Everybody is praying for him. And nothing has happened yet. So this pastor says to him, can I pray for you? He says, of course, of course, please pray for me. And so this guy lays hands on him and prays for him. Now remember, I've, I've explained to you the, the old-fashioned scales and how sometimes we have problems and challenges on the one side and it's weighing down. And we've got to put prayer in the other side. And Scripture tells us to pray and to keep on praying. Jesus says, knock and keep on knocking. Don't give up. Don't just pray once. Keep praying, keep praying. And so we've all been praying. And, and I, you know, in my mind's eye, this is what I'm seeing happen. You know, we're we all praying for him and, and, and so on. And so those scales are going, going, going. And so this man comes that day after the service, lays his hands on, on him, prays for him. He's got so much pain and instantly God touches him. No pain. He phones me. He's so excited. He says, he says, I think God has touched me. He says, I, I've got no pain. What happened? Those scales just, just tipped. And so God touched him there. And so a couple of days later, I phoned him up and said, hey, how are you doing? He says, I've had no pain. I've, this is the first time in months I've had no pain. I phoned him a month later. Hey, how are you doing? He says, man, I'm fine. I've got no pain. I said, have you been to the doctor? No, maybe I should go to the doctor sometime. <laughs> so about six weeks later, he goes to the doctor. Eventually, I'm saying, you clown, go to the doctor. He goes to the doctor. The doctor says, I don't understand this. I can't find a trace of cancer. <laughs> so this happened. This happened now. Now, just, just the other day, just, just a couple of months ago. I don't know what you're going through at the moment. I don't know what, what you're facing at the moment. And you may be, may be feeling feelings of, of discouragement, of fear, hopelessness. I, I don't know what it is, but all I'm asking you today, don't let your feelings dictate your future. Don't let your feelings dictate your future. Don't let the physical rule over the spiritual. The spiritual is so much more powerful. You and I have got to learn to exercise our, our faith. And so when, when you and I come and, and we, we use the faith God has given us and we start trusting God, we're going to see things happen in our lives that we haven't seen before. Don't just be led by the nose like, like a, a bull. Uh, uh, don't let the enemy lead you by the nose. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. What does that mean? It means sometimes it's going to feel like you're walking in the darkness. You don't understand. It doesn't make sense. 
and, I, and I'm walking in darkness. I, I can't see. Here's the good news. He can. He can. That's what it means to walk by faith. It just means I keep my hand in his hand. And I, I don't understand. And it doesn't make sense. But I walk by faith. And I'm trusting God. And so there are times where you and I have just got to do that. If God has promised to strengthen the weary and to give power to the weak, won't he do that? Come on. If he's promised to go before you and to be with you and to never leave you nor forsake you, won't he do that? Now, come on. Do we live by feelings? Do I live by God's word? Come on. Let me end off with this last story quickly. In Matthew chapter 21, Jesus and his disciples are busy walking toward Jerusalem, and he's hungry. Now, back in those days, as you know, I don't have to tell you this, you know this, they didn't have McDonald's, all right? They didn't have drive through but they had walk-throughs. What is that? Fig trees, all right? So he walks up to the fig tree, and it has no figs on it. It's like going to McDonald's and they run out of burgers. How do you do that? And so he does that. He walks up to the fig tree, no figs. And Jesus, this is funny. Jesus says to the fig tree, he speaks to the fig tree, and he says, nobody will ever eat from you again. And right there in front of their eyes, that fig tree starts shriveling up and dying. And the disciples are looking at that. And I can imagine them thinking, how did that happen? How, how did he do, what did he do? <laughs> and Jesus uses that moment as a teaching moment for them and for us. 2,000 years later, listen to what he says. He says, I tell you the truth. If you have faith, here's the condition. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this. And much more. What's the condition? Faith. Faith. And then he says, you can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. Another translation puts it this way. Listen to this. Whatever things you ask for in prayer, believing you will receive. Man, why, didn't, why did he have to put that word in, believing? Why didn't he just say, whatever things you ask for in prayer, you will receive? Thank you. But there's a condition. Whatever things you ask for in prayer, mixed with faith, believing, that's the key, then you're going to receive. Do you see how important it is? That you and I don't just blindly get led by the nose and just keep following our feelings. That, that, that we follow God's word. That we follow what, what, what he says. And, and maybe you're thinking, oh, Leonard, you know, I wish I just had a little bit more faith. Listen, let me say to you, wishing is not going to do it. You don't need wishbone. You need a little bit of backbone. All right? <laughs> what does that mean? Get into the Word. Get into the Word. And start exercising the, the little bit of faith you already have. You say, well, that's the problem. I don't have faith. You do. You do. According to Romans chapter 12, we all have a measure of faith. So it's almost like God has given you and me faith muscles. And your muscle may, may be quite small. Use it. Exercise it. And the more you use it, the more you're going to see God do things in your life. But those things are not going to happen unless you switch from, from feelings to faith. I want to end with that same question again. Are you going to follow your, your feelings? Are you going to allow your life to be dictated by your feelings, which very often is the enemy? Or are you going to follow faith, follow God's word? I, I know which way I'm going, all right? And so I have time. 
you have times where your feelings aren't great and we've got to correct it. We've got to identify, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm not going down this road. And, and the, simplest, the simplest illustration for me is waking up in the morning. And you don't feel great. Are you going to go through the day like that or say, no, 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 hang on, hang on. I'm trusting God. Lord, thank you for a new day. Their patience with cancer, where when they wake up every morning, oh, I've got another day. You and I wake up and we go grumpy through the day. No, 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 no. Don't let that ever happen again. Amen. Come on, let's stand. I want to pray for us. And for some of you, you didn't want to come to church this morning. Aren't you glad you came? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you've given each one of us the measure of faith. We've got, we've got a, a faith muscle. And so I pray that you'll help us to use that muscle to develop our faith. And when negative feelings come, because they come to all of us, help us, Lord, to look beyond that and to follow faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you.